I think we all know that Bradman averaged 99.94, uh, and then there's daylight between him and the rest. There's a couple average just over 60, and one of them is George Headley, the great West Indian, whose best years were just before the Second World War. And indeed, there wasn't much between them. Headley was the most tremendous batsman, so skillful, so light on his feet. 22 tests, 10 centuries. But he batted almost alone in that West Indies team of the 30s, whereas Don Bradman had wonderful backup. And when the great line of West Indian batting is set before an onlooker, it begins with Headley every time. It goes George Headley, um, then probably Everton Weeks, then Gary Sobers, and then Viv Richards, then Brian Lara. They'd be the five considered great. But this George Headley, boy, I mean, what a record. As I say, average just over 60. All right, only 22 tests, I'll grant you that. He scored a double century against England that people who still remain, there aren't many, would still be talking about. Had there been support for George Headley, it's possible, I suppose, he might not have scored quite so many runs, but he felt the responsibility of batting for his territory, and mighty well did he do it. Atlas, they called him, because he carried West Indies cricket through all those tough years. But for the time that he played, the impact he had, the range of stroke he had, fantastic eye and fast hands, and the ability to consistently make big scores in a team that wasn't long on batting, it's perfectly reasonable and dead right that George Headley is in the absolute echelon of the game. He was the greatest West Indian batsman of his time, and you can still argue he's the greatest to this day.